beautiful sunny day. You've got a fender bender on the BQE at Sheepshead Bay. But here on the upper east side, it's a balmy 79 degrees. And we're gonna run in here to the Whitney Museum. Take a look at an exhibition of Cory Archangel. Although I'm not a big fan of high tech or computer assisted art, I am a fan of subversion. And in a lot of ways, I think that's what Cory's art is about. here this morning. I'm Adam Weinberg, the Alice Prepper out here at Whitney. Um, welcome to Pro Tools, um, Corey Archangel Pro Tools. This is Corey's first major New York museum show, and we're pleased to present it at the Whitney, where we've been following Corey's work now um, in career very carefully for quite some time. His work crosses a wide range of media, including computer-generated work, performance, video, music composition, installation, sculpture, and works on paper. Corey is obsessed with highly manufactured renditions of reality. His work looks back not just at recent technology, but at the entire history of representation in art. In his work, there is humor, pathos, beauty, and a deep understanding of time's evanescence and the fragility of all things. A theme in Archangel's work is the tension between the ready-made an off-the-shelf product or technology, and the artist's creative act, which often consists of a minimal intervention that positions the product as a work of art. This exhibition, as I mentioned, was curated by Christian Paul, the Whitney's adjunct curator of New Media Arts. And thank you all for being here and um, enjoy the show. Thank you very much, and good morning. Thanks for coming, and I also want to thank Donna and Adam and Curatorio thank Corey for making this show possible, transforming uh, this floor, and producing in a very, very short time frame mostly new works for the exhibition, and always being a pleasure to work with. So thanks a lot. Uh, this exhibition is very important to me for several reasons. A major portion of the art that we're seeing today in museums and galleries uses digital technologies as a tool, but we very seldom get to see art that uses these technologies as medium, making uh, use of its features, or reflecting on the technologies and the impact they have on our uh, culture today. Digital culture and tools, how they affect us and how they create um, their vernacular and allow us to express ourselves are the issues that are really at the core of um, Corey's work and there are several themes explored in this exhibition that frequently surface in um, Corey's work. How the pop cultural vernacular, DIY and internet culture intersect with the art world is one of the major themes. Um, another main narrative of this exhibition is our fascination with and um, our hopes for technology um, of which uh, Corey very often makes us aware by simply undermining them. And as you may know, the games here are highly frustrating on some level, but what Corey really um, investigates here is the aesthetics of the digital medium of embodiment and of simulation. Um, what does that really mean to our experience of the world? Well, thank you, Christian, Donna, and Adam. Um, I really appreciate it and for this opportunity. I wanted to briefly thank a couple people and then I guess I'll give a tour. That's cool. I mean, you don't have to come on the tour. So for those who are interested, you can come. And the rest can just hang out. Um, I want to thank my wife, Hannah, who, um, for everything. <laughs> Thanks for coming. And um, I guess we'll just we'll start this way. Yeah. We cool? Okay, thank you. Geez, Jerry showed up. So Corey, do you bowl? Yeah. What, 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 what do you usually bowl? 80. 80? Okay. <laughs> On so a good day. Bowl. So this is, um, these are, uh, all the projections you see are generated by these machines on these tables. These are video game systems starting from the late 70s up until the 2000s. Each has been modified to roll only gutter balls. And so we start with the Atari and we work our way up to the 
GameCube from 2001. And um, we will turn the sound on in a second. Um, over here is a, a kinetic sculpture featuring 10 synchronized, um, what are called dancing stands. These are pretty cheap product display units that I get um, from China. And they have been synchronized and then also configured um, to fit in the corner in that particular shape. It's very close to a ready-made. Uh, this wall right here is a, a Jay-Z blue. This is a color. Um, Jay-Z has his own color, and um, this is that color. Not exactly international Klein uh, blue. These right here are six identical pencil on paper drawings. They are produced by what is called a pencil plotter machine, which is a very rare technology from the 90s, which is able to produce ice. It's a, basically a robotic arm with a pencil. And uh, so this is a one drawing in an addition of six. And um, the signature is also as well produced by the machine. Um, these right here is a series of sculptures called Hello World. They are generated by a computer. The com I have written a computer program with, which, um, which generates shapes in three dimensions. And then I send that file to the factory, which has a machine called a computer numerical controlled wire forming machine, which is a machine which can bend metal wire. So these are entirely produced uh, by machine from start to finish. And each is unique and random. Over right here is a very similar idea. It is, uh, they're drawing, pen, pen drawings produced by a machine called a pen plotter. And to produce them, I've written a program which generates, which takes between zero and a hundred lines drawn to zero and a hundred random points. So each is unique and each is machine produced. And um, there's one that is blank that you'll notice because in that case the machine had picked that it would not draw any lines. And then the next room that you're going to see is a piece called Paganini's. Paganini Caprice number five. Uh, it's all new work, so I can't exactly remember what I titled it. Uh, it is a couple hundred instructional guitar videos, which have been re-edited note by note to play Paganini's fifth Caprice, which is um, a piece for violin written in the 1800s. It's a very important piece, virtuosic piece for violin. So. in that song and the influences that song had after it was released in different music. So it starts with uh, pre-punk, uh, Phil Spector, Bay City Rollers, moves on to the Ramones, Bengals, then moves up to the 90s, uh, uh, skater pop, and then up to Avril Lavigne, then to Kelly Clarkson, then to Lil Wayne. So um, it, it, it tells a history, of many different histories at the same time which are encapsulated in the songs that you've got. Or I should say, I, I propose that it tells tells us history. This is 10 flat screens in the box. I, I was drawn to this particular graph. Um, um, two other pieces at the end are, um, one is a display unit featuring Oakley sculptures which are part bronze. Um, the rim of them are bronze. And the other is a video um, which is every single instance 
from this, the show Seinfeld that Kramer talks about his coffee table book about coffee tables. That, uh, it's about ten minutes long, and it, the, that is over about two different seasons that that storyline evolved. Hey, 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 you know what would make a great coffee table book? A coffee table is a history well, I think this is maybe one of, for me, one of the most interesting parts of the show. These are his Photoshop default color pieces. And well, this really does sort of show off uh, some super high-tech printing. And it's amazing the kind of richness and the color you can get, although being someone that likes human beings and humanity, I, I miss a uh, hand-touched quality that finishes. You know, I think um, one of the other interesting things about these color works that are all based on uh, the use of artificial intelligence is that somehow they do lack, you know, they're so logical that they lack the kind of uh, illogical, kind of whimsical color mixes that, if you ask me, that is what is really required for great color combination. Now, I saw a piece like this at, I believe it was the Younger Than Jesus show down at the New Museum. I guess this has been about two and a half years ago. And I was kind of impressed with it. This piece is a great of a riff on a Rothko. As a matter of fact, they've got a Rothko upstairs here that looks kind of like this. This is James Come coming to you from the Whitney Museum. Reporting on Cory Archangel's Pro Tools. Thanks, Kate.